Boom. Particular. Mushroom. Hello, everyone. This is Particular Mushroom, and I've got a nice slab of spaghetti for you on our latest episode of Tricks, Secrets, Glitches, and More. I... I'm gonna have to pronounce that name now, huh? Sirena Beach, Sirena Beach, Serene Beach, Soroba Beach, Soprano Beach, Sassafras Beach, Sirena Beach, El Mio Spettatore. Seriously though, there is no documentation of this name anywhere. Most people say Serena Beach, as in the name Serena. But is this the pronunciation Nintendo intended? The world may never know. My favorite will always be Serena Beach, but let's just go with Serena Beach. Before we get started, this is the final announcement for particular Discord, at least for some time. We've got contests, events, challenges, a particular bot, and of course, questionable memes. I'll be there as well as other fans of the channel, so come check it out and talk about video games, mushrooms, and maybe even some general burn side. I mean, look at those sideburns. Also, I've got a Twitter which I will definitely start using again. Totally. All that will be available in the description below. Okay, let's get into the thick of it. Creating a stage like Serena Beach is a gamble, and no, not because there's a casino. Turning the confined spaces of a four-star hotel into a level for a 3D platformer sounds like an atrocious idea. How are you supposed to platform inside a hotel room? But, despite the restrictive movement in tight quarters, the puzzles, whopping six unique areas, two bosses, and overall mysterioso of the place sells it like a home away from home. I actually get pretty excited every time I visit a hotel, and I think it's just because of this game. Because once I settle into my room, the magic immediately wears off as I realize I can't crawl through the air ducts and pop into people's rooms for the sake of solving mysterious Hotel Utah. Boy, would that be fun, though. Anyway, the point is Hotel Delfino is a great package. Obviously, there are some exceptions from <laughs> Episode 6. Yet somehow Nintendo nailed it while still retaining the feel of an actual hotel that actual people would want to stay in. So let's check in for the evening and start our first category. Secrets. As you spawn into the orange sands of Serena Beach, taking a detour to the left meets you with three boxes. The left one has a coin, the right has nothing, and the middle has a 1-up. The compulsory urge to crush boxes is strong, so I'm sure you already know about this one. You should also know about this M graffiti, so I hope you're paying attention to the small red smudge hiding under the letterbox for two seconds, or else you'll run into the hotel and waste hours trying to find it. I know I usually don't mention blue coins, but this one really annoys me, even more so than the subjectively sneakier one in episode 5. Also, did you ever wonder why there's a random set of stairs here that leads into a stone wall? Like, why bother digging it out? Well, it's because the stone patio is designed to look like a GameCube controller. Yeah, I didn't believe it at first, but a quick aerial view dispels my suspicions. This dead end is the controller handle, and these obtuse pools are the X, Y, A, and B buttons. The torch is the start button, and the cabanas represent the control pad and C-stick. Quite the unexpected easter egg. I still think they should put like a chair here or something. Spraying the goop off, spray- Duh. Where did this coin come from? Are there more coins in the gr- Ah! Who put these here? Most episodes only have 14 coins outside, but episode 1, The Manta Storm, has enough to net you the 100 coin shine. Presumably to provide relief for those struggling against our Manta boss, there are 56 coins scattered across the beach, bringing the total amount of coins to 101. Which means you're running around spraying this area, that area, 5, 10, 20 times trying to find those last few coins? And then one just pops out in the spot you were sure there were certainly none left. After grabbing these coins way more than I'd like to admit, I decided to make a map. Study it, the test is on Tuesday. This coin right here is the worst since it's right next to the boxes. Who decided to put that one there? But now that you know where all the coins are, let's head into Hotel Delfino. 
Once inside the lobby on episode 2, The Hotel Lobby's Secret, I've got a small challenge for you. The Fruit Climb Challenge. All you have to do is grab a fruit and get to the top floor without wall jumping. It's not too hard, but bouncing on booze is great and I need an excuse to do it more. They're just so bouncy! Inside this episode's secret box is actually three one-ups. After watching the stroll and stews, uh, self-destruct themselves? Break open the first brick for an extra life. If you break the third brick, there's a coin there as well. Head over to this stack of melons for another life. If you break the stack behind it, there's another coin. Then head over to these ice blocks for the final mushroom. There is also, of course, coins here and let me tell you about coins. Despite the 12 whole coins in this secret box, the 100 coin shine here is impossible. There are not enough coins in the episode to reach 100 and far from it. It's a shame too as there's no reason to use this alternate sand path. Why did they even include this? I guess you can do this cool jump, but all that is, is stylish. To cherry top my frustration, if you hack the game to give yourself 100 coins, there's actually a set location for the shine. But let's move on because I have another challenge for you. The second brick challenge. All you gotta do is break this second brick in the stack here. It might seem impossible since you can only break the blocks from underneath, but the trick is you can actually land on this spinny platform. You want to jump quickly after landing so it doesn't move, and from solid ground you just need to do it a few more times. Ta-da! I'm kinda disappointed there's no secret coin or anything. I know it just fall into the abyss, but... Wait. Aha! If you break this block and then break the block below it, the coin falls to the death line. Oh, but interesting. If you don't break the block fast enough, the coin just floats where it is. I guess that would also mean... Yeah, interesting. Let's uh, wrap up this secret box now. You can walk right off this block here to clip inside the platform. Hotel Delfino has plenty of secrets, but Episode 3, Mysterious Hotel Delfino, will have us figuring out most of them as we break into people's rooms to complete the episode. Look, yell at me all you want, lady. I wouldn't have to be in here if you didn't take the last freaking pineapple from the fruit desk. How inconsiderate of my needs. Some of these secrets, however, are optional and fairly easy to miss. Talking to this Pianta will direct you to the leak in the men's room, where you can jump up into the bath on the second floor. There's no indication, but you can actually do the same thing in the ladies' room. There's a blue coin in the preceding room, which is also accessible by breaking this glass table. Why are there two secret ways to get into this room? I don't know, but there's actually three. There are a few secret rooms housing blue coins, which you can access by solving the puzzle or by being lazy and going to episode 7. When Shadow Mario visits the hotel, every single door is open. So he can just walk in here, grab the coin. Wow, that was so difficult. Another secret the game teaches you about is flippy panels that allow you to traverse between floors. There's one between these two rooms that's fairly obvious, but there's actually another one in this room. This tile here, despite not having a silhouette in the room below, is a flippy panel. Strange, just like the flower pot in the ladies' room. I know the game teaches you to spray furniture, but for some reason I never thought to spray this decor for a good old coin. I think this would have made a far better blue coin than generic lamp number 22. Now that we've got some money to spend, let's head to the casino. Well, Mario's free anyway, but you know. Inside the casino is a pretty elusive one-up. Like, I know I'm not the first person to figure this out, but because blue coins are all the rage, I can't find any documentation of this one-up anywhere. So as soon as you enter the casino, leave. Look up at the elevator and give it a spray. I never thought to try this. I found this on complete accident. That is a good spot. Let me know if you knew about this one. Is it a fresh fungi or a moldy mushroom? 
So four palm tree lamps light up the casino. But they're not actual trees, of course. They're just cute, thematically fitting decor. Except, this bottom right lamp, if we jump at the right spot, Mario grabs it like a tree. You can't grab the other lamps like this. Only this one. My favorite part of this is Mario ignores collision on this thing, so he can stick his head inside the light bulb or lose the lower half of his body. Finally, when we climb to the top of the tree, Mario just kinda hops off. Who? Once you've got big winnings at the casino, namely broke all the machines, let's head down below and pay King Boo a visit. King Boo is quite dedicated to his slot machine, so if it rolls all coins, you're getting a healthy handful of coins. Firstly, this allows us to grab the 100 coin shine in this arena. It has a strange spawn location, strangely high up and right behind the Big Boo's head. Grabbing the shine will despawn King Boo, but not the slots. We can get Mario to just phase into it during the shine get animation. Okay, bye Mario. The other benefit of the coins from the slot machine is it's technically possible to reach the 999 coin limit. I say technically because it's both not worth it and very painful. Not only is hitting three coins dictated by the randomness, but there's supposedly a greater chance of rolling coins as you get lower on health. Dropping to low health puts your entire stash of coins at risk just to maybe get coins faster. And if King Boo decides to spit the burning bozos at you while low on health, we'll say goodbye. I'd instead suggest trying out the Boo Parade. So, if you refuse to hit that slot, King Boo decides, oh, well fine, I'll just start spitting boos at you. Soon enough, they start to clog the screen and it gets pretty hectic. Thankfully, they tend to just follow Mario so we can lead them in a circle around the arena and prevent them from getting unmanageable. These boos will cap out at 50, and any additional boo King Boo spits out will just despawn the last one. So poor Boo number 50 doesn't get to do anything. While fighting King Boo, if the slots roll and nothing lines up, King Boo will spit out bubbles. This is supposedly in case you run low on water, since bubbles always drop water bottles. But these bubbles are weird. First off, they follow Mario, which, uh, bubbles aren't sentient. And then, they divide after a few seconds. They only despawn if there are too many on screen, so if we don't break them, they'll just follow Mario around the entire fight. Like they're just bubbles, but it's kinda creepy. Even more creepy than King Boo. Okay, he just looks like he had too much peon to punch. The bubbles even persist after you defeat King Boo. They will finally despawn, though, if you grab the shine. Among the myriad of enemies King Boo spits out, one of them is the Electro Koopa. These guys act pretty normal, but if we manage to bait the shell into King Boo, it will disappear. These guys will sit there awkwardly until eventually another shell just like grows back. I don't think there's another way in the game to remove the shell like this, but I could be wrong. So we're moving into the trick slash exploits category now, and we've got more in King Boo's arena. In order to damage King Boo, you'll have to throw a pepper at his face and then a fruit. You may already know that you can kick a durian right into the king's face to damage him, but you can also jump into him with a fruit as well. Here I come, King Boo! I'm coming for your face! Blah! He's lined up! He's ready for the shot! And... Go! You know, I wish durians had more of a use in sunshine, but they really don't help with glitches at all. At least they're fun to kick around. If we slide into a corner with a durian like so, we can get stuck in an endless kicking loop. Kicking the fruit into this chair can also knock it into this little nook, and it poofs away. It's also possible to get the durian in an infinite bounce. There's actually a bunch of small tricks here. You know what? Let's do a quick speed round. Ready? Go! If you climb through the attic and get the camera angle in the right spot, you can see the fire burning on the first floor. A spin jump with Yoshi can put you through the flippy panel on the next floor. You can perform this move on the weak spots in the attic before you even break them. Mario can fit in the crevice here, but if Mario slides along the stone slab, he won't fit and the game will push him out. By holding the... <laughs> By holding the... <laughs>
By holding <laughs> Why is this one so hard? By holding the control stick in the same direction, you can perform this trick repeatedly. I'm not sure what Yoshi's doing here, but it's something alright. Yoshi can eat pineapples through crates. What? That's hilarious. Let's again talk about 100 coins. On its own, the 100 coin shine inside the hotel isn't too interesting. But let's head to episode 3. The regular shine in this episode is located in the shallow pool on the third floor. Thinking what I'm thinking? If not, I don't blame you. The light above the pool actually houses a coin, which conveniently drops right below the shine. So if we grab the shine and land on the coin, the 100 coin shine cutscene will immediately play, and then after we hit the ground, the regular shine cutscene will play. Notice though that Flood is actually displayed on the screen, with the water tank strangely missing. And that's not all. By landing with the shine before collecting the coin, the regular cutscene will play, and then after fading to white, the 100 coin shine cutscene plays. Without you able to see anything. Afterward, Flood will show up on the save screen. Again, something that normally doesn't happen. If we head out to the beach, there's even more 100 coin exploits we can do, specifically in episode 1. If we spawn the 100 coin shine and grab it while the Mega Monster Manta is nearby, it'll instantly disappear. This actually counts as defeating the Manta Storm. And at the tail end of the cutscene, we can see Mario teleport in front of the hotel. Right there. Mario faces the opposite direction while the shine and the camera face the same angle. Oh, and we have to wait in silence for most of the cutscene to play out. This time, however, the Serena Beach music will start to play on the save screen. I discovered, though, that grabbing the shine will only terminate manta rays within a certain distance. Other manta rays will continue to move around as normal. If the shine is taken and a manta ray somehow manages to run into Mario, he'll face the manta ray as if he's ricocheting from the hit, but won't knock back or take any damage. Also, let me just say thank you to this mana for zooming in here and finally hitting Mario. All the other mantas were being total jerks about it. Do you see this manta? Do you see this manta right here? To be fair, the manta AI does have some oddities. When hiding under the cabanas, manta rays will usually flee until we come out to face them. But if we manage to get a manta on top of the cabana as we go under, it will hopelessly encircle Mario as it tries to end the plumber's life force. I do enjoy watching them though, they're, they're kinda cute. Who's a good manta? Who's a good manta? Mario doesn't like you, but I like you. I think it's time for my singular tip for this episode. The manta storm comes out of nowhere. I mean, it just appears on screen. What about at least a fade-in, like this? See, it's, it's not that hard, Nintendo. While the Manta Storm is a cakewalk nowadays, it may easily be considered the hardest boss of Super Mario Sunshine. If you're playing this game casually for the first time, whoo, you've got a giant slinking monster inching towards you, and then it spits into smaller, faster, obnoxious Mantas, and when you finally get all the big ones gone, the entire swarm starts swarming you. Add in the electric goop and this boss may crush your confidence thinner than the Manta itself. If you're one of those people, well then I have the solution for you. If you stand right here, the Mantas will pursue Mario but never get close enough to damage him. On top of this, Mario can't run out of water in this spot. So simply stand and spray until eventually, the entire Manta Storm is defeated. Alright, I think it's time for a little break and... And, can I complain for a small minute? Mario will fall asleep on the totem pole, on the lamp, on the table, but you know where he won't sleep? On the couch! He just like, stands there! Who doesn't fall asleep on the couch? Everyone falls asleep on the couch! You can't honestly tell me that the table is more comfortable! I've got my eyes on you, Mario. Now it's time for the Pianta Extras! There's some pretty entertaining writing here, and it's a shame it took me so long to notice. First off, we have the Doot Doot Sisters, who mention, when they're done listening, we're done dancing. As the episodes go on, the Piantas continue to complain that their spectators won't leave. Eventually, they kinda just give up. 
Most of these lines are good, but my favorite is probably when the blue Pianta sings, What are you thinking? It's time to go. Dee do, dee do. Get yourself a clue. Can't play no mo. Dee do, do, do. Between their dialogue and the green Pianta saying, It's about time to go back to the room. In episode 8, we can deduce that the events in Serena Beach take place in one evening. I like this guy who complains about Mario's head blocking the sunset, or how the drinks never get restocked at the drink counter. Apparently those are just samples. King Boo, did you drink all of the Pianta Punch? <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a yes. There's even a cute little story about how this shell dude learns to chase his girlfriend on the beach. Aww. Once we get inside the hotel, the subject of the dialogue leans toward Mario. After all, Mario breaks into people's rooms, so of course, they've got some things to say about it. I get a really creepy vibe from this weird painting, but you want to know what I find even creepier than that? Imagining how you got in here! Simultaneously entertaining and a hint about the secret boo in the picture. Good one, Nintendo. Do something about these ghosts, and get out of my room, you weirdo! This? This is your room? Where, where do you sleep? On this little mat right here? Beak! What are you doing in here? The men's room is on the other side! Double exclamation point. Some of the chats get better if you come back in later episodes. So tell me, is my room just a shortcut now, or what? Uh, how did you know? So, um, nothing much bothers you, does it? You got that right, lady. This is Mario. You came in knowing it was the ladies' room? Shameful! Hey, you remember to stay out of the ladies' room! No matter how many times I tell you, you keep coming back! Oh, the poor Pianta. There's also a weird situation in the pool room where this Pianta hangs out all the time. And I wouldn't have thought anything about it except she says, I hate the crowds and gah, the noise! Um, crowds? Noise? Where? It seems like a totally random comment. But then I went over to this guy and he says, There doesn't seem to be anyone else besides us here. Hop in hotels, she's spying on him and she likes him! <gasps> but none of the Piantas compare to Sweepy over here. The first time you meet him, he makes a slick reference to Luigi's Mansion. Why can't somebody come along and suck him up with a vacuum? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Then come back the next episode and he'll tell Mario, You're a pretty greedy little coin grubber, aren't you? Dude, that savage! He's totally right too, what the frick? And before we move on, I've gotta give props to the hotel owner. He's one of the only Piantas in the entire game who actually recognizes that Mario isn't the same as Shadow Mario. DK thumbs up. Okay, we're finally here, the section you've all been waiting for. The Glitches! Let's-a go! First up is the Walking Underwater Glitch in Serena Beach. Pick any episode past the first one to get the barrels to show up, and haul one over to the ocean. You're going to want to walk forward until Mario starts swimming and immediately jump backwards slightly, so Mario is standing again. Drop the barrel, jump into the water, and swim around to the barrel in the same spot you just were. Make sure you are still swimming, and press B to grab the barrel. Mario should pop right under the water, and that's it. You can pick up the barrel now and take it with you. I decided to put the barrel underneath this blue coin here, and I don't know. I think it looks cool. I call it... Art. Uh, hey, here's the next glitch! If you bounce on the boo in the right manner, you can clip through the statue here. I'm not entirely sure what happened, to be honest. But there's another small glitch you can do here. If you select Exit Area just before hitting the secret box loading zone, the game will instead load the title screen. I'm pretty sure you can do this with all loading zones. So I was playing around with fruit in the lobby, and normally when you throw fruit into the water, it dissolves and reappears where we found it. 
However, I, for some reason, decided to place the fruit in the water. Well, it's still there. I tried it out in a few locations, and apparently you can just place a fruit underwater wherever. Now, maybe you've tried this before with no luck. Well, the key is to weigh deep enough that the fruit gets placed underneath that water-air boundary instead of on it. So that's already a good discovery, but then something weird happened. So I'm messing around with the fruit to try and clip through the floor or something, and the fruit timer starts running out, so I gotta run back to the fruit stand and pick up another. And it doesn't spawn back. Okay, what's going on here? I wait and wait and nothing. So I jump up onto the counter where the fruit should be and press B. And now I'm holding an invisible banana. This banana works like any regular old banana, except you can't see it. Just so weird. And this glitch is very peculiar. If I throw that invisible banana into the water, it will be replaced by another invisible banana. However, if you let the banana time out, then a visible one will spawn. This doesn't seem to work with any other fruit, and to top it all off, it has to time out underwater near the totem pole. I tried placing it in another spot and it just came back as a regular old banana. I'm not sure what's going on, but what I did notice is when another fruit disappears, it simply poofs. When the banana disappears in the right spot, it also makes a splash. Weird. Now let's select 7 episode again. Yes, Shadow Mario has another broken path in Hotel Delfino. If we get Shadow Mario to enter this room, he'll drop down through the flippy panel. And instead of exiting the door, he'll... Wait. He just exited the door. That's... that's not supposed to happen. Hold on, I'm sure that path was broken the last time. Uh... Okay, so it's not broken, actually. But rather, you can break it. Normally, Shadow Mario will jump to activate the flippy panel. But, if you spray the panel before he jumps, he'll fall through and that seems to alter the path just enough that he completely misses the door. And then, of course, there's trademark... Teleport. Also, because all the doors are open in Episode 7, we can clip through both the Dolpik poster and the Boo picture in reverse. The back of the room divider has the picture of Boo, but jumbled, and we can't clip through this one. We have to make the Boo go away to open the divider. Our next several glitches are all going to involve wall clips. Like here. I don't know what it is about this wall that makes it so broken. Maybe that wooden beam but it's some kind of special. Like, look at this. What, what is even happening right now? This also marks our first encounter with what you could call the level boundary. Upon colliding with the level boundary, Mario will remain stuck, frozen in midair, as long as you hold the control stick toward the boundary. Let it go and you'll fall to the floor below. Which brings up another detail. The level boundary on the second floor is the same as the level boundary on the first floor, despite the geometry being different. More on that later. Also, just wanted to show you that. Next up is the fruit flip, otherwise known as the flippity doo -dah. Take a banana to any thin wall in Hotel Delfino and line up as perpendicular as possible. Put your back to the wall, switch to the spray nozzle, and hold R. When ready, press A to flip out and press B to throw the banana at the height of your jump. With a bit of good luck, you'll pop right on the other side. We can actually use other fruit to perform this glitch, but I think we can agree. Banana's the best. The most common use of the fruit flip is, of course, skipping the entirety of episode 3. Beating this episode is as simple as grabbing a banana, wall jumping up the totem pole, because cool kids take the totem pole. Who takes the stairs? Performing the fruit flip, and there it is. However, this isn't the only way to skip episode 3. For the alternate method, we'll need the fruit push. Funnily enough, the best way to set up for the fruit push is to fail the fruit flip. Performing the fruit flip puts the banana in the perfect spot to perform this glitch. 
Once in place, we simply have to jump in between the fruit and the wall to push right through. Now this glitch doesn't actually work on the pool glass, but it does work on the pool room wall. Doing so will place us inside these lounge mat things. Since we're already out of bounds, clipping into the pool is no problem. However, it does place Mario inside the floor, and to fix that, just be ready to hover. Bam. Another small thing while we're here, did you know we can actually exit the pool room what's inside? We just can't come back in. The fruit flip definitely seems superior to the fruit push, but the fruit push has an advantage in that it's low to the ground, allowing easy clips into furniture. Like the lamps. These generic furniture items have a lot of empty space surrounding them, but the game just has a square bounding box around it, so you can't actually touch the lamp, which is quite upsetting. But the fruit push changes that. By using the fruit push at the corner of the pool room, we can get inside the bounding box covering the lamp, allowing us to touch it. I touched the lamp! I touched the lamp! Next up is floor clipping. First thing to do is find a flippy panel. Jump into the panel, hover, and then move into the tile just as Mario's hat rises above the floor. We'll clip inside and float through the floor. We can also perform this glitch in the attic, too. Unfortunately, furniture and walls usually retain their collision, so there's not a whole lot we can do with this glitch. Okay, I'm thinking maybe take a small dip in the pool, huh? What do you have to say? You can't really swim when the water's this shallow. You wanna bet? Can't swim in the pool, my banana. Watch this, palm pants. You're gonna eat your words. Just, just give me some time here. Yo, yo, so close. Come on. Yeah, look who's swimming now. Water's too shallow, please. Head to episode 3 so we can grab Yoshi. Now that I've got my dip in the pool out of the way, let's talk about the Yoshi wall clip. Here's how it works. Face Yoshi away from a corner. Jump and flutter back into the corner. Then jump off Yoshi with X. If Mario moves to the side, you'll need to readjust Yoshi and try again. If Mario lands behind Yoshi, you're good. Simply hover and immediately afterward tilt the control stick in the direction you want to go. Sometimes the wall clip doesn't work the first time, but as long as Yoshi stays put, Mario can jump on and off Yoshi to get back in the same spot. The Yoshi wall clip can get us through thin walls, but as you're seeing on screen right now, it can also clip us through the walls in the attic. I was hoping this clip would allow us to fall into the elevator on the first floor. This unused set of geometry that's just asking for a wall clip. Unfortunately, we can't. The elevator seems to be outside the level boundary, and none of the tools available to us can break it. Trying to break it will actually knock a life off Mario, and I'll show you in just a minute. So unfortunately, we can only clip through the attic insofar as we stay inside the level boundary. If you try and clip out in this corner, for example, the game just does not let you. The furthest we can reach into the void is at this corner. Why? Well, because that's where the entrance is. As long as the area is in bounds on the floor below, it's inside the level boundary on a floor above. So now on to the next glitch, teleporting to the bottom of the world. Maybe void teleport for short. If we clip into the wall in the attic here and hit the level boundary, we'll fall into the room below. It may not appear so, but we are still out of bounds here. For some odd reason, moving may randomly drop Mario into the room below. Okay, whatever. From here, there's not too much to do, but if we switch to the spray nozzle and sidestep into the level boundary, this happens. There are multiple ways to perform this glitch, but what I like about this location is we somehow hit a pocket of water, and Mario swims around a bit in the void before drowning. Interesting detail, when down in the void, the floor that chooses to be visible is the attic, rather than say, the ground floor. Oh, hey, here's something I totally forgot. If we ground pound in between this Pianta and the wall, and then talk to him, we'll void teleport as well. You have to ground pound right 
in the middle, but it is possible. And that's it for the hotel. So onward to the casino! Let's check out one of the more well-known and useful glitches in Serena Beach, the casino skip. We're gonna skip all those lame minigames right through to the curtain call. No more will you have to deal with the random freaky flip-out panel that always flips to the wrong side. Head over to either of the fountains, I picked the left one, and jump up onto the frame, and jump up onto the frame, and jump up, backflip into a wall jump, and hover over towards the entablature. It's best to hover into the center, but you don't need to be so precise about it. What's more important is that you maximize your height, because that invisible ledge is far up there. Next, turn perpendicular to the entablature, switch to the spray nozzle, and sidestep into the void. If angled right, you'll fall right next to the warp pipe. But once you start falling, you might want to hover just to be safe. If all you're interested in is skipping the casino games, then go ahead and jump in. But this glitch comes with a few peculiarities. For one, we can finish the puzzle in reverse, which lowers the fence before the curtain. Although sadly, the curtain is still a one-way trip. If we sidestep into the level boundary, we can also void teleport as we've seen before. If we sidestep just a little bit and then jump, the game will push us into the floor and... Well, the column has its own collision. How about that? If we perform this glitch in episode 5, jumping into the pipe will do nothing, as the loading zone is no longer there. On one final note, there is another ledge above the big slot machines and... Pfft, Mario, are, are your feet okay there, bud? Okay, let's finally head into the casino secret box for a pretty glitchy glitch. This secret box is pretty tame, and it doesn't look like there's much to do here at first glance. Side note, this would have made a good turbo box challenge stage, but the game just didn't give us a turbo nozzle. However, these rectangle things are hiding a nice little set of glitches. First off, jump into the slot here and just relax. Yeah, it doesn't actually push you off, it just instantly kills you. What's more, if you hover into the rectangle, death may also sweep over you. Or, if you're lucky, you will wall clip through instead. Yup, clip or die. And there doesn't seem to be a clear distinction between the two results. Looking at the frames right before hitting the platforms, they look pretty similar, but they produce different results. You'll have to try this one out and tell me what you think. Let's line up the final slot in King Boo's Arena, where there are two more glitches. When first spawning in, if you ground pound one of the purple tiles as soon as they start moving, the platform won't halt, but instead switch directions. Hitting it again will stop it as normal. Actually, all the platforms switch directions. Ha! I just noticed that! Second, if we spray King Boo to spin the slots and then run under him to make him flee, the slots will be stuck on whatever shows up when he reappears. King Boo tries to give the slots a spin, but they're like, nah. Then King Boo kinda stalls out for a few seconds. Give him some time, the slot machines aren't working and he's really upset. Interestingly, the slots will continue to spin off screen, and even if you land on all pineapple and the confetti starts falling down, King Boo will spit out whatever's on the slots when he floats back up, which is pretty much always bubbles. Okie dokie. It's time to begrudgingly talk about scaling the roof of Hotel Delfino. Going into this episode, my two highly anticipated glitches were clipping into the elevator and getting on top of Hotel Delfino. I can accept that it's impossible to clip into the elevator as the game physics simply won't allow it. But I knew, I knew it would be possible to get on top of Hotel Delfino. There had to be a way to do it. However, much to my dismay, nothing I tried was working. There's no fruit, there's no Yoshi, all we've got is these stupid barrels that don't seem to do anything. Yeah, I know they clip underwater, but what, whatever. All seemed impossible, until a Discord user by the name Admiral Arrow pointed out to me a nameless technique which I'm calling the Infinite Wall Jump. Yes, you heard that right. So wall jumps in this game are pretty simple. Jump into a wall and once you start sliding, jump again and you'll kick off the wall at the angle of reflection. 
The biggest limitation is if you're already standing next to a wall, the sliding never happens. Then something came along and completely shattered these rules. The Y button. Pressing Y puts you into that weird first person, not first person view. Apparently it doesn't have an official name, so I'll just call it close up view. Switching to close up view while sliding down a wall allows you to completely change your wall jump angle. This allows us to wall jump parallel to walls. And then there's part two. In normal circumstances, we would just fall to the floor now. Mario doesn't wall slide, so there's no way to jump again. Except, the close-up view circumvents that as well. By switching into close-up view and facing the wall, Mario will again start to slide. Chaining these two techniques together allows us to infinitely wall jump. This theoretically would allow us to reach the top of Hotel Delfino. Except, there's one more problem. I was practicing this maneuver and I managed to get a pretty nice 15 wall jumps in a row. That sounds like great progress, except I barely got any height at all. It's one thing to wall jump 100 times, it's another thing to wall jump 100 times and come out with a net height gain. Gaining height with this technique is extremely precise. Performing this technique requires us first to face the wall to slide down it, and then face away from the wall so we're close enough to perform the technique again. On top of that, it must be performed fast enough that Mario actually gains some height in the process. Doesn't sound too bad, but the actual angle window you can perform this maneuver is very small, probably like 5 to 15 degrees wide. Making the angle too small will shoot Mario away from the wall, and too big and Mario will immediately hit the wall again. This will cost you a few jumps worth of height, and is usually discombobulating enough to cost you your entire run. Not to mention any angle less than perfect will cost you a small amount of height. If you want some more wiggle room, you can try and spin jump after every single wall kick. But for me, that just makes it worse. Add in that it looks like you'll need 20 near-perfect wall jumps at minimum, and you've got one of the most difficult maneuvers in all of Super Mario Sunshine. Theoretically possible, realistically, a death wish. So what now? Is it time to fold our hand and call it a sunset? Yeah, right. I'm gonna do exactly what I did last episode. Hack in a rocket nozzle. Or more specifically, switch loading zone so that, uh, okay, you don't really care. With the rocket nozzle on back, this is nice and, wait. There's an invisible wall around the hotel. Is it actually impossible? Okay, we can't say we're done until we've tried rocket storage. Let's a go. Aha, we've broken the barrier and the floor just isn't there, putting us instead inside the hotel, where I'm sure if I stop jumping, yup. So just like Blooper Surf and Safari, the invisible wall only extends so far, and then we can pass right over. You know what this means though, we're gonna have to try and pass over the stony walls. Wahoo! So just like before, if we hit the level boundary, we can sticky Mario right on it. Thankfully, the level boundary outside the hotel extends beyond the normal boundaries, and so we can fall into the underworld, just like Rico Harbor and Delfino Plaza. We can also swim outside the boundary, and wouldn't you know it, if we swim down deep enough, we'll activate the frozen in water glitch. It operates exactly the same as the one in Rico Harbor. You can steadily swim down into the depths, and reaching the bottom will one hit KO. And with that, that's everything I have to show you in Serena Beach. If you have any additional insight on anything discussed in this episode, I'm happy to hear it. Many users on the Discord have been helping me out with these glitches, and their contributions are outlined in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to answer that poll so we can decide on the next stage to tackle. I know I've been on an unacceptably long hiatus, but life has a way of getting in the way. I'm still not in the place I want to be, so things are still subject to change, 
but now that this video is out, I'm ready to discuss the possibilities. So if you're interested, join the Discord. I'll be putting out a fairly sizable form that may very well determine the future of this channel. But regardless, in the short term, I definitely have some shorter videos I'll be putting out. Thank you for your patience, support, and criticisms, and I will see you on the next episode. I'm gonna take a cue from Mario now and go take a nap. But I'm gonna be cool and sleep on the couch, Mario. Bye bye What if I said, have a Manta Monday? That would require I release the video on Monday, though.